Hello and welcome to week four of uh, County Cricket, all things to do with County Cricket and beyond. This week, another quiet week, County Cricket-wise, but um, as I speak, some news has emerged. Uh, Pakistan all-rounder Shoaib Malik has signed for Warwickshire, or should I say the Birmingham Bears, uh, for the NatWest T20 Blast. He'll be available for six matches. Uh, he's played 55 uh, 2020 games at international level, uh, 30 year old, so should be a good experienced player for the uh, Birmingham Bears as they are now known in that short format of the game. Um, this week also, of course, England uh, suffered a 2-1 defeat to the West Indies in their uh, T20 World Cup preparation uh, in the Caribbean, so quite disappointing even though we won last night narrowly by five runs thanks to the heroics of Chris Jordan. Uh, Michael Lum uh, and Alex Hales. So those are the main pieces of news this week, another quiet week. This week I'm going to um, deviate from predictions and talk a bit more in depth about a particular news story that's particularly close to uh, to my heart as a Lancashire fan uh, about uh, the lack of a replacement for Simon Katic and uh, whether or not it's a, a big issue or not. Uh, as with any news story, there's there's lots of angles to it. You could say, of course it's a big loss. He was such a big part of our of our season last year. You could say, well, it's not such a big deal because we've got lots of other batsmen who can fulfil the needs of, uh, of run scoring. But then there's also this untapped angle that actually there was kind of this promise that we were going to get somebody and, and that it was a priority for us to replace him because he was such a big deal and it never actually came into fruition. So... Yeah, lots of different angles. We'll start with the the first one, that of, uh, of course, it's a big deal um, because of how, how much of a, uh, a good player he was. Um, he topped the batting averages for Division 2 last year and, um, yeah, <laughs> kind of self-explanatory. He scored uh, a couple of double hundreds, uh, massive aggregator of runs. Um, no, no surprise why Lancashire were promoted with him and the likes of Lewis Reese obviously emerging and Ashwell Prince doing so well, Paul Horton return from injury and hit the ground running. So yeah, Katic, big part of that setup. But not just because of his immediate impact with the runs, but I think the 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 way he helped the setup with his experience. I mean you have people like Chapel who don't necessarily play every game, but because of their experience and and how they can influence the younger players like Lewis Rees. You know, it's no surprise that a top-order left-handed batsman like Katic can have such a big influence on people like Rees, who are the same style of batsman, you know. Um, so when you've got a player like, like Katic, it isn't just the direct influence that he scores over a 1,000 runs in the season and has an average of, I think it was about 70 in the end. Um, but it's the indirect ways. So yes, he's a big miss. Then there's the argument that he's not such a big miss because we've got all these other players like Prince, Reese, Horton, who are fulfilling those needs. Yeah, it's a fair enough argument, but when you're moving into Division One, a more competitive division, you know, simply by you know it's Division One, of course it's going to be more competitive. So simply by your judgment, you've got to have the, the quality to, to uh, sustain uh, survival in that in that league. Um, so it's all very well and good having an, a plethora of, of good batting in the second division because, of course, it's going to stand out in uh, the context of, of that division. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see this year how Lancashire fare because, you know, the, the quality of the bowling you have to face is harder. And then, likewise, the quality of the batsman that you're competing against is is also harder. Um, so the likes of Lewis Reese will be under a lot of scrutiny this year because, you know, suddenly he's this emerging player who should have a lot of praise put on him from from where I'm concerned. Um, but suddenly he's got this heavy expectation on him to perform because he got, you know, so many consecutive fifties last year and shot up the averages from from being unheard of by by many. Um, so yeah, he will be a, a big miss, I think, Katic, because even though you've got all these batsmen who can replace him, uh, it, it doesn't quite justify um, 
his availability based on the you know the league that we were in at the time and the final sort of angle of this story is you know the promise that was kind of made to the Lancashire faithful um, at the start of this debacle if you want to call it that um, we we kind of knew that his availability was was possible. He said that he would like to come back, as have McLenaghan, as have Faf Duplessis. They've not come back yet, so it was never guaranteed. Um, and then of course the news emerged that he was he was going to retire and have a, a coaching role in Australia. So we thought fair enough, he's a he's a big miss, but we'll find another player of a similar. Um, calibre, or we'll go for a different angle and we'll sign a bowler or whatever. Um, but in the end, you know, nothing happened to go from the promise of, you know, Peter Moore saying it was such a big deal to have someone to replace him uh, to fill that gap and then not to get one at all was kind of weird. And then to come out with the reverse argument and say, well, actually, we don't need a replacement because we've got enough talent sending a few mixed signals. But I would be a complete advocate of the the most recent update. You know, we do have enough batting. I feel yes. Suddenly, if Lancashire are in the relegation zone after three games, everyone will be pointing at Peter Moore saying, "Why didn't you get a replacement for Simon Cassich?" But it's a lot like looking at the England setup at the minute. You would you would think that Michael Lum, Alex Hales, Luke Wright, Owen Morgan, most experienced players of this ten year competition, twenty twenty. Um, that there'd be no reason for them to fail and yet they're 40 for 4 you know every other game and we, we point the finger at them so definitely um, his name will probably be floated about if Lancashire struggle but then suddenly if Lancashire don't struggle it's it's, it's the hindsight the value of hindsight you know um, that suddenly it'll be okay because we, we did have our resources all in line and it was all it was all planned <laughs> You know, um, so like like most uh, talking points, it's the value of hindsight, and I'm I'm certain that um, if the, if the likes of Lewis Reese, Paul Horton, uh, and of course Ashwell do the job this year, which I, I hope they do, um, that he won't be missed so much. But of course, there is the possibility that we might look uh, into an overseas player as his season develops. Um, now. Why would you move into this sort of thing at a later point? I was discussing this with a friend, and the argument that I gave was: if a if a team are struggling to survive in a league, of course you're going to try and sign a player. But also, if a team are doing really well in a league, they're going to try and defend that position by making the squad even better. The only occasion when a team aren't going to invest in in a player is if they're in middle of the table and they're not afflicted by either of these problems because they don't necessarily need to secure any any of these positions or either of these positions um, and there's no justification for it. So if Lancashire do well this year, you still might see a player come in. But I think a more likely scenario is that if they are suddenly struggling to survive in, in a very competitive league that it will be more likely that we'll get someone come in in that scenario um, so that's it for this week um, just trying to show you guys how even as a Lancashire fan I can look at things or try to look at things uh, objectively not much news this week other than England uh, having a bad preparation for the World Cup but thankfully Shoe Malik has given me something to talk about on that front and yeah, Simon Katic, not coming back to Lancashire, pros and cons of that. That's it for this week. Like, comment, subscribe, all the usual uh, ramble, <laughs> all the YouTube ramble. And uh, look forward to next week where hopefully more news will have emerged. Thanks for listening.